Okay, folks, so this is basically the follow-on video uh, talking about aliasing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a cosine wave here, okay? And this cosine wave here, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create this waveform that starts at 0 seconds and goes to 0 0.1 seconds. So it's just a tenth of, it's a, just a, tenth of a, a tenth of a second. I'm, I'm going to plot it using 10,000 data points, and I'm using a lot of data points because I want to make sure I accurately portray that sine wave. FM, what I'm calling FM, and, and I'm using the notation from the book here, so somewhere in here, here you go, somewhere in here, this is a chart that I really want you to learn. FM is the sampled frequency, so it's the frequency that is coming into your analog digital converter. So remember, you're gonna have a signal, it goes into your analog digital converter, it has some sampling, uh, sampling rate, that's gonna be FS, and the output is going to be your output signal, and what we're gonna find is that you're, depending on your sampling rate, the ratio between your sampling rate and your sampling frequency, you're actually gonna get what's called an alias frequency. So if you're lucky, your, sampling, your alias frequency and your sampling frequency are gonna be the same. If you're unlucky, if you don't sample at the right rate, your alias frequency will actually be lower than your sampled frequency. So right now my, my, my input signal has a frequency of 80 hertz, and so that means it's gonna be two pi 80 radians per second, and I throw it into this sine wave here, okay? Now, if I plot that, I'm gonna get a truth signal, but then I want to sample it. So let's say my analog digital converter is super slow and I can only sample at one hertz. If I sample at one hertz, that means I'm gonna take a data point at zero seconds, at one seconds, at two seconds, at three seconds, okay? If I run this and plot it, you're gonna see something kind of strange. The blue line is the truth signal, and if you look at the period, the period is 0.0125, and that makes sense. One divided by 80 is 0.0125. And the sampled waveform is just this one star. Now, why is there only one data point? Well, the thing is, is that you, your, your period is one second, right? One hertz. And you took a data point at zero, but you're not going to take a data point again until one second. Well, you're only sample, you're, you only sampled for 0.1 seconds. So what we really need to do is we need to take a data point every 0.1 seconds. So 0.1 seconds would be 10 hertz. Okay, so let's try that. So if you take a data point at 10 hertz, okay, now we're getting somewhere. We have a data point here, and we have a data point here. The problem is, is I haven't captured the signal correctly. If I look at this, the way I've sampled the freak, the, if I look at this, this is just a straight line. And so this is what aliasing is. Aliasing is when you sample lower than the fundamental or input frequency and your output frequency is actually completely different. So what's the limit? Well, if I sample at, you know, say, um, I don't know, it's point, 0.025, right? So let's, let's sample at 80, let's sample at the same frequency as the input signal. And if we do that, you would think that it would look right but unfortunately, we're sampling at 0, 0 0.025, and then 0, uh, wait, 0 0.0125, sorry, and then 0 0.025, and then we're so on and so forth. And we're actually just grabbing the peaks. And so a frequency of 80 is actually not good enough. If we do 100, now we're getting into some, ser some, some interesting issues. But if you look at this, if I connect the dots, this does not look like a 80 hertz signal. This actually looks like a, what's the period here? The period here is 0.05. So if I do 0.05, one divided, what's one divided by 0.05? That would give me my frequency. One divided by 0.05, that's 20 hertz. So if I take my 80 hertz signal and sample at 100 hertz, I'm, my output wave is gonna have a 20 hertz signal. Now, I'm verifying this sort of via simulation, but there's actually a way to do this using this folding frequency graph. And there's actually an example problem in your book that does exactly this. You take the uh, sampled frequency, 80 hertz, so that's the input frequency, and you, your A to D is sampling at 100 hertz. What you do first is you take your sampled frequency and you divide that by two, and I'll explain the divide by two later, but that's gonna give you 50 hertz. Once you have Fn, 
which is called your, your folding frequency. That's gonna give you two. You then compute your sampled frequency divided by your folding frequency, 80 over 50, and that gives you 1.6. If you come up to this graph here, you need to find 1.6. So if you find 1.6, what you do is you draw a vertical line down from 1.6 and this gives you your aliasing frequency divided by your folding frequency. So your aliasing frequency divided by your folding frequency, because you got 1.6, is 0.4. And so if you take 0.4 and you multiply that by your fold folding frequency, you get 20 hertz. So you see that? So our false frequency then is 20 hertz, which is exactly what we got in this waveform. So what do we really want? We really want our, our, uh, the ratio of our alias frequency and our folding frequency to be one. So in order for it to be one, it means our sampled frequency and our folding frequency need to be the same. But for our folding frequency to be the same, it means that our sampling frequency needs to be twice the frequency of the fundamental waveform. And if you scroll up here, you actually get to what's called the Nyquist criterion, which says that your sampling frequency must be greater than two times your input frequency. And so if we go back to our Python code and we say, okay, let's do 160 hertz and run that, what do we get? And there you go. You get something that is perfectly matched and if you look at that, that's going to give you a sampling rate of, or sorry, that's going to give you a waveform of 80 hertz. So you're sampling faster than the actual waveform, and it needs to be twice as much. So if you did, you could do, I mean, if you had a, if you had a system that sampled at 1,000 hertz, great, because now you're taking a ton of data points, and you're not going to have to deal, you're not going to have to worry about any issues, okay? And that is really the only lesson plan I wanted to give you for aliasing, and it's that you need, if you have an input with a certain frequency that's changing at a certain rate, your sampling rate must be faster. And so this kind of applies to your circuit playground, right? Like your circuit playground, say it's taking accelerometer data and you put it on an airplane. You need to make sure that if that airplane is pitching up and down, your accelerometer is sampling fast enough to pick up those oscillations. Because if it doesn't, you're gonna end up into a scenario like this where your airplane's doing this and your accelerometer is telling you that everything's fine. Your airplane's gonna fall out of the sky. So you need to make sure, at least for you know, embedded processors, you know what sort of input frequency you expect to get and then double it and make sure that your instrumentation is sampling at twice that. And that's the, that's the lecture for today. And this actually concludes the lectures for the entire semester. Uh, you have one more homework assignment to do, and then, and then that's it. Uh, well, I guess you technically have your final project, but uh, if you're in my class and you're watching this video, it's been a, a pleasure to see you guys at least at the beginning of the semester, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll see you guys again. And uh, good luck, and take care.